Real Bible Based Prophecy Ministries presents The Bible and You, the last message for the last generation. We invite you to listen in and be blessed with your host, Pastor Eon Morris. Amen. Good morning, and a very hearty welcome to our listening audience. Our ministry is the Real Bible Based Prophecy, and this program is called the Bible and you, the last message for the last generation. We would be here every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. To, to take you through a spirit-filled journey through the Word of God. Last presentation, we looked at the value of man, the value of man, where we began in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and we began with specifically the creation, the creation of man, where God used dirt. Yes, dirt. He could have used anything else, but he used dirt to create man. And the value that God gave to man was himself. Mm -hmm. we, be we became, or we became joint heirs with Christ, a true connection we were created for his glory. And then the mind of man is meant to house the mind of God. As we identified in Philippians 4, 5. Let this mind be in you. Oh, yes. Which was also in Christ Jesus. The value that man do not deserve. But one that we should solely embrace. Mm -hmm. Today promises to be another spirit-filled program. And I would like to welcome our very own, a man of God, Pastor Ian Morris. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, good morning. And it's a special, you know, morning to be here and I'm humbled. Humbled yes. just to, just to repeat the word of God. Yes, Just, Amen. just to um, express the word of God. It's such, it's such a privilege. How... Could the mortal yes. stand in the place of the immortal? You know, mm. we just we just stand with him. Yes. Amen. So I just want to pray at this time before yes. we go any further. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Father, it's such a privilege and a responsibility. Yes. An awesome privilege and responsibility to share Christ. To share his word to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and beyond. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you, according to Jeremiah 1 9, that you'll put your words in my mouth. According to Isaiah chapter 1, come and reason with us. Oh, yes. For we know that what, whatever condition that we are in, once we, you, you can, we have that space to reason with God, though our sins be as scarlet, they Jesus. shall be as white as snow. Thank you, Lord. But a live call from off of your altar, according to Isaiah chapter 6, so I would speak your words, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are looking at the value of man and... We looked at, at, at man, God placing such value on, on man that he has face-to-face -face connection with God, that we were made and designed to sit on his throne, to be joined heirs with Christ, that we are created for his glory. We, he bore our guilt, he altered our salvation because man is so valuable. That, as you said, Elder yes. Paul, that, that our minds will... Designed to house the mind of God. Amen. Uh, that we judge with him. That is in addition to being created in his image and likeness. Yes. So, we looked at all of that. I want to introduce that, that even though God did all of this, uh, there is an enemy. Hmm. And the enemy... Has an issue. Yes. The Bible speaks of an enemy with an issue. Hmm. So we must first find out who is the enemy and what was the issue. 
So, there was a problem because someone else laid claim to the title God of the Universe. Consequently, if, 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 if someone, if another created being is laying um, claims to the title God of the Universe, then man would be a prime target mm -hmm. since man was designed to express the image of the divine. Man was designed to accurately express God. That's why he's a target. Man's purpose was to show, showcase God. Likeness and image. This rival, therefore, if he must lay claim, a genuine claim, to the title of God, must first capture the allegiance of man. This rival must find a way to kidnap resemblance and replace model. Because man was designed to make a divine statement, this rival must find, must find a way to capture man so man would make a statement of him rather than of his creator. This, uh, therefore, if this is done, and, and, and when we look at, 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 at what the devil is doing, there is ontological and character implications. Hmm. There is, there is, we, 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 we must look into being. Who are you? And if you are looking, uh, uh, um, going to look at the ontological, if we are going to look at character implication, then we are also must invariably talk about identity. Hmm. We must address identity. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. Consequently, truth is not on Satan's side, it is not on the enemy's side. It is not in the enemy's best interest to, uh, uh, to bring humanity into truth. So therefore, the only available option for this enemy is deception. Mm. That's the only available option. For him to achieve the kind of power that he wants and and if you're claiming to be god you are seeking not only power you're seeking absolute power so satan's aim was for absolute power in john chapter 8 verse 44 however before we go there satan's aim is absolute power but God must counteract Satan in a way that is faithful to himself. God, God cannot fight Satan by being like Satan. He can only fight Satan and address the issue by being like God. So, uh, John chapter 8 verse 44, talking about the enemy... He said, hey, Jesus said, you have your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abided not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He is a liar and the father of it. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Oh, yeah. He's talking about the last days. He's talking about the perils of, of, of the time. And before he goes to wars and rumors of wars, before he goes to earthquakes and pestilence in diverse places, Jesus said, firstly, let me say, let no man deceive you. Why? Because, because the devil has come down and his only option is deception. Hmm. That, that's, that's, that's why... The Bible is so important. The Bible is so important. Some people would question the Bible, but we will deal with that at another, at another time. Oh, yes. 
But let's first, you know, I, 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 I tell people, um, you know, you go to court, and if you go to court at a jury to hear the, to hear the arguments of the lawyer, the judge will urge you to listen to both arguments yes. before you come to the conclusion. Mm -hmm. I'm saying my brothers and sisters, some may be listening to this, to this broadcast. I urge you, let's listen to the arguments so we can come to the conclusion. So let's consider the rival. Let's, let's, let's find out who he is. What is he like? Because he, he is seeking to capture man that was made to express God in physical resemblance and in character. So let's consider the rival. Let's consider how the Bible describes the rival. The Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, it says, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Be like the Most High, not in character, but in power. Yeah. So the devil, he wants to exalt himself to the throne of God. He wants to be like the Most High, not in character, I'm saying, but in power, absolute power. He wants to be like God, number one. He wants to sit on his throne, number two. So, it is interesting that with this in mind, God creates a creation that could sit on his throne. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, I just want to repeat, therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down, set down with my father in his throne. In Revelation chapter 24, verse 4, I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So in man, what Satan wanted, God freely gave to man. Therefore, man created to be an associate of God, um, not associate, well, a partner of God. I, I think that's better. Created to be in partnership with God, man must not simply be subdued. Man must be destroyed. Why destroyed, preacher? Because man was created to reflect God. And, 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 and if man was created to reflect God, then the devil who lost his place in heaven, man will adequately replace him. Yes. Man will be more than an adequate replacement for the devil. So with unfettered zeal, Satan, Lucifer, went to war with God and man who would also be the casualty. Hmm. It must not simply be, I want us to say very clear, it must not simply be in the, the mind of Satan that, that, that God must be stopped in the mind of Satan. Man must also be stopped. Why? If man is not mortified and destroyed... Man will invariably remind the universe that Lucifer is not God. Because man was made in the image and likeness of the creator. In the image and model of the creator. 
man and God is yoked too closely together from creation. So man must first be molded in image and likeness and be destroyed. If man, but but if man has the image of any other creature that God has made, man can only be zero. Hmm. Because it's only God that gives man value. Yes. So if anything that is less than God replaces God, man is still zero. Every creature gets his value from the creator. So even, to, so even the devil had to get his value. That's Lucifer. He was Lucifer before. He had to get his value from the creator. Some people even say, why was Lucifer created? We will talk about that in a future broadcast. Oh, yes. There's only one way that man could be molded and destroyed. Only one way that man could be molded and destroyed. Man must first yield. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, and the word translated servants means slave. And, and if slave, you have become the possession of the person that you are a slave to. Whom to ye, whom ye yield yourself, servant to obey, his servants are ye to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So he can, so he, the devil, needs to remodel man. If man is not remodeled and destroyed, man would remind the universe of God. Man must be remodeled into his image. And man must be destroyed. Man, therefore, was the target for destruction. Hmm. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it was and is and will be a satanic program, a Luciferian scheme, the destruction and the remodeling of man. The grand Luciferian scheme, the grand demonic scheme, the grand satanic scheme, is to destroy, is to remodel and destroy oh, man. man. Hmm. It will involve, again, I say ontological issues. It means being. It will involve identity because if man was created in the image and likeness of God, it means that God determines identity. Not society. Oh, yes. Not even the person determines identity. God determines identity. To determine your own identity would be to step in the place of God. Amen. <laughs> so God in the beginning says, okay, I've made you in my likeness and image. You have my identity. But the world is now saying, I, ha I, will, I will say who I am. But God is saying, I am telling you who you are. Yes. Oh, yes. But for man to come to the point where man believes that he must determine who he is, every principle must be violated. Deception would be paramount so that man can freely believe that they can step in the place of God. Satan's goal, I want to remind you, is power. Oh, yeah. Absolute mm. power. So what did he look like? What was his image and likeness? We know there's a devil who wants to arise and replace God. But what does he look like? Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13. The devil is here symbolized. The devil is here symbolized. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. We know that no man except Adam and Eve, who are the creature, was in Eden that was offensive to God. So he's here symbolized as a king. So we, pick, we are picking it up in verse 13. It would be nice for you to read the entire chapter. Beautiful. 
Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was he thy covering. That's his likeness. That's what he looked like. Every precious stone was he thy covering. And, and, and as if uh, the Bible is saying, I want to make sure that you understand. The Bible says, Sardis, Topaz, Diamond, the Beryl, the Onyx, the Jasper, the Sapphire, the Emerald, the Carbuncle, the Gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Uh, uh, it's interesting that gold was viewed as a precious stone. Interesting. So if the devil was made with Jasper, Sapphire, Chalcedony, Emerald, um, uh, topaz, beryl, the onyx, the jasper, mm -hmm. sapphire, the, the carbuncle. If 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 the if the um, if the devil was made like this, mm -hmm. I'm saying, could you imagine? Because he was a covering cherub. We looked at that. Uh, could you imagine the devil, the Lucifer? You see, when Lucifer went against God, Lucifer became the devil. So could you imagine Lucifer standing in the presence of God and the glory of God would dance delightfully off, off of Lucifer? I mean, it was like a discotheque. Mm -hmm. could you? <laughs> the glory of God shone and, and all the various colors. It, 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 it was a delightful work. Amen. So you have man on the one hand made from the dust. And Lucifer made from jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold. You have all of that. So you have man from dust and Lucifer from every precious stone. Now, God is deliberate. Yes. Man from the dust. Lucifer made from every precious stone. If Lucifer wants to, to capture man and remold man in his image and likeness, then, then physically, as well as in character, he has to pull man to be like him. Amen. But man naturally would express God. So if, 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 if man would naturally express God, what must Lucifer do to pull man and make man like him physically and in character? If man naturally looked like God, if man naturally bore his image, if man, the, 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 the only way man had to, had to reflect the image of God was to be born... Man must therefore take on something that is foreign to him to look like Lucifer. To reflect his image. To resemble him. That creature had, that had gold and diamond and sapphire and jasper and, 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 and onyx and beryl. He, he, he would have to add something to look like Lucifer. If man again naturally looked like God... He would have to add something to physical resemblance. He would have to be mangled in character. So Satan must first corrupt the understanding of God. Lies must be told. Lies must be and would be the order of the day. Deception must be the new normal. Hmm. One's lifestyle must therefore be built on deception. One's lifestyle, again, I'm saying to you, must be built on deception. Let's, let's look at some of the, some of, uh, like, popular deceptions in the world. So, the world says children are very important. They are very important, except when they are in the womb. When they're in the womb, they could be slaughtered, they could be killed. When they're in the womb, they could be mangled. They, they, their foot could come first and the head could come. And when they're in the womb, they could be destroyed. But when they're out of the womb, you lose control to discipline them. Hmm. When they're in the womb, 
they have no value. But once they come out, not even the person who gave birth to them could now discipline them. So the same government that says you could kill them is the same government that says you can't discipline them. <laughs> you have no right to direct their lives. You cannot spank them if they perpetually are resisting and, and rebelling against all that is good and honorable. You can't spank them. But the police, when they are full grown adults, could give them a good licking. Hmm. You can't discipline them, but I will lock you in jail if you, if you go against law. So, some say, let's enjoy ourselves. You see, one, one of the reasons why discipline is needed is that, especially with young men, is that young men who are going to be leaders of their families, they must be able to rise above what they feel and do what is right. I get up and go to work this morning, and all I feel is to lie down. But I have to go to war for my family. Yes. I have yes. to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling to lie down at this time. Everything inside of me. But, 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 my, but, but I must be disciplined in such a way that what I feel cannot govern what I do. That there must be a higher authority when it comes to determining who I am and what I do and what I say and how I behave. Can't discipline them. No wonder there's a rise of abuse. Because if I cannot control how I feel when you get me angry, how do I control my behavior? Another deception, sex. It's an act you can, you can do it without consequences. Hmm. Sex is free. You know sex is never free. <laughs> <laughs> you either pay it up front or not. <laughs> the freer it is, the greater the consequences. <laughs> sex is neither free nor cheap. But if you are taking morality from the movies and the movie industries, industry, you'll believe that no consequences will come with reckless living. Another fallacy is reject the Bible as the main source that exposes the devil. Do not believe God's word. Redefine the truth. But, but, but. But when we, when, we, when, when, when we do that, then what material do we have to identify the deceptive working of the devil? The devil has humanity just where he wants to have humanity. Because without the word of God, without the standard for truth, we would not know who is in error. So... When man sinned, man yields to God, and therefore value would always be a problem. So value must, must be supplemented. Identity must be reshaped. Deny the, the divine reality. Deny divine reality. So, man, made in the image of God, if man removes from God, you know when Adam and Eve in, in, the, in the beginning accepted, accepted the, the idea that um, virtually that God is a liar, hmm. they accepted an alternate truth. 
That's, that's yes. why I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, there is not your truth and my truth. There is just truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And truth comes from God. And, and ma as mankind, we must yield to the truth, truth that comes from God. Amen. Amen. So you find, so you find, when, when Adam and Eve, when they, they yielded to the devil, believing Satan's uh, Lucifer's lie, believing Satan's lie, um, and, and, and embrace his lie as truth, something happened. Something happened. So, I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, if the devil must mold us into his own image and likeness, he, has to, he would have to cause us to put on something. And you will have to make us up into something. It's interesting that 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 in our in our time, the whole um, um, jewelry and the cosmetic industry they thrive on the whole concept of giving value. So there's a particular store online. It is interesting that they say you can change your life. You could bond with people. You could express uh, uniqueness. You can boost self-esteem. You can escape your comfort zone. Just embrace the adorning of your body. They went on to say that, that jewelry can give you power. By choosing a piece of jewelry that you love and, and feel happy. That's ornamental jewelry. And feel happy wearing. You take control of the way you are perceived. But you see, you see from the beginning, there was no need of that. Because, because, God, because God is saying, because God is saying, no, I am your source of value. But yet an entire industry has been created to give man value. Mm. Mm. I'm saying that when we separate from God, humanity faces this absence of value. And now we are scrambling to have to add to zero <laughs> We went on to say it can be a great conversation starter. So instead of the mind being a conversation starter, instead of a character being a conversation starter, in, 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 instead of reality being a conversation starter, you put on this and it becomes a conversation starter. So it is all about you, what's on you. It can make you more positive. And it is interesting that, 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 that any time that you, you would find mankind going away from God, mankind would always have to add something. So in the Bible, there's Nimrod, and Nimrod would, would, would create a number of cities. Nimrod would create a, no, a number of civilization. And, and after the Tower of Babel, and we will, we will deal with that at a subsequent uh, program. After the Tower of Babel, man is, is dividing, according to the Bible, in, di in different areas. And then Egypt soon emerges, the children of Ham emerges as the powerhouse. You know, as you, as you look, through the thousands of years of, of human civilization, um, every son of Ham had its moment in the sun. <laughs> every son of, 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 of Noah, sorry, yeah, had their moment in the sun. The first glory was given to the son of Ham. And what a civilization they developed. That's why the whole notion that 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 black people are stupid mm. and, 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 and and we don't we don't we don't um we don't um we are not intelligent and we can't develop and so on no no the children of ham laid the foundation for civilization yeah. when we look at egypt yeah and and babel hammurabi the 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 the, the lawgiver in babylon mm -hmm. nimrod the 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 the, the son the grandson of, of Ham. There, there is no doubt that as you look through the Bible and, 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 you, and you look at, 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 the, at, the, at the track and the journey of, of, of the different sons and, and, the, and the descendant of the different sons of Noah, you, you have no doubt as the potential of humanity. Yes. 
So in Egypt, in Egypt, they quickly developed. They quickly developed uh, makeup, and makeup was not simply ornamental. Makeup was a magical thing. Yeah. <laughs> you see, makeup was was originally designed to look like the gods, but even now, as they, as they talk about makeup, look like a goddess. They are not joking, you know. Yeah. They are really speaking the yeah, truth. Yeah, yeah. And, and Egypt had different kinds of God. The frog, cat, dog, snake, rat. Every kind of animal was a God. Hawk, bird, falcon, important God. And, 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 and after they remove from God, after they remove from the God of the universe, they started to look at the God of the earth. Because if your, your, your God is not upward, then your God will be horizontal. Yeah. If it's not vertical. Yes. Because human beings were made to express the gods. And so, quickly identity and beauty began to be shaped by looking like the animals who embrace us gods you had to wear makeup to look like the cat mm -hmm. or to like the snake or the falcon mm -hmm. or, or or the or the cheetah or whoever your god was it was not only simply about being sexy it was religious yeah. so beauty was beauty was never um, defined outside of your spiritual worldview. So in the beginning, God is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm making you of the dust of the ground. I will beautify you with myself. I will determine what beauty is. When man is trained from God, he has lost his sense of value. He has lost his identity. Everything is mis misplaced. He's, he's now re being remodeled. And he could never be beautiful enough. Hmm. So he has to make up to be beautiful. Yeah. And his spiritual outlook always redefined, always would define what beauty is. You see, the gods determine identity and beauty. Mm. So for Egypt, you had to look like the gods to be beautiful. You had to look like a cat. And, and therefore, therefore, they would always shape their eyeliner in a certain way. Mm. So that their eyes would, would uh, resemble what a cat would naturally look like. And that to them was beauty. Yes. Because beauty was always defined as resembling the gods. But even today, look, yes. look, 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 look at the slogan from, from many of those uh, cosmetic companies. Looking like a goddess. We could make you to look like a goddess. <laughs> and, and these things... It, it doesn't ring an alarm bell because we are so we are so distant and 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 and, and, um, and separated from history, even our own history. And so they they had to look like the the different uh, gods and whether the, the gods was a snake and and so when you when when you look at uh, Egyptian Egyptian society, uh, their makeup would always reveal you can look at their makeup and know who served different gods. Yes. You see, in Western society, we, are, we, are, we, we, we have no sense of sacredness at all. We just do things because it feels good. But, 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 but that was never the case. Actions was always the springboard of conviction especially spiritual conviction so so paul would say later on in the book of romans 
they corrupted themselves like corruptible man to birds and four, um, four-footed beasts and creeping things. How did they become like that? Because man naturally cannot be like that. Man would have to put on something to become like that. I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, as we are winding down, the time has come for us to take a look at ourselves. I say to people, all kinds of people, but let me for a second talk to African people. Who is defining your identity? Who is telling you that, that, that you cannot be beautiful except you have a hair extension? Who? Hmm. Who, is, who is saying to you that unless your hair is straight, you are not beautiful? Who? Why are you believing it? This, this, is, this, this is beyond a certain race, you know. This is the devil himself. He may use a certain system to say, hey, you're too black, your lip too thick. Uh, 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 you, you have too much curves and, and he had too nappy. He may use a system to do it, but behind the system is the devil himself trying to remodel man. Why do you have to bleach your skin? When did God have a problem with the color of dirt? Who says to you, who said to you that God had to bleach dirt before hmm. dirt became acceptable? That's the thing. Who is lying to us and why are we believing the lie? Why, 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 why do we have to have gray eyes and blue eyes? What, 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 what is it? My, my brothers and sisters, everyone, whether you're jet black or toast brown or milk white or banana yellow, I'm saying to you that your value is not based on cosmetic. Your value is based on God. And, and, and there's something, there's something about a woman who is comfortable in their own skin. Yes, yes, yes. There's something about a man who is comfortable in their own skin. I mean, look at what has been happening to us. So men had to first slick their hair, and then, then, then you have to jerry curl, and mm. then, then you have to do something to put wave. And, and, and. Who, what, what, what is the devil doing to make us hate ourselves? Why are we believing the lie that is reshaping our identity? Let me ask a question before I, I close up. If your beauty comes from makeup, then your beauty is fake. Let me, let me repeat that again. If your beauty comes from what you would buy from a Western company, then your beauty is fake. And if your beauty is fake, how is that beautiful? How, how do you drive a fake car? How do you eat fake food? It's either it is food or it or isn't. Not. Hmm. It's either you're beautiful or you're not. And the challenge is with humanity is that we must embrace our beauty. We must embrace our value, value given to us by God. Somebody today, I'm challenging somebody today, today to take a look at themselves again and, 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 and see what you're doing for value. When God is saying, I'm your value. I'm your value. Oh, today we would continue this discussion yes. because you know we'll be here Sunday after Sunday. We'll continue our discussion. Let's just bow our heads and pray, Heavenly Father.
speaking to the world, I'm speaking, crying out to Trinidad and Tobago, value. I pray, Father, that we would return to God, the God of heaven and earth, who created everything, so that we can have value in you. We can have original value, which would be true value. We have to continue this discussion. I pray that you would have a conversation with Trinidad and Tobago, Lord. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, I'm, 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 I have to, I have to follow uh, the leading. Let's, let's, let's open the lines up. Just for just for a minute, yes. I, I just have to follow a leading. <laughs> let's let's open the lines up uh, for a moment. Um. Well, thank you so much, and uh, you with Power One Two Point One FM this Sunday morning, and uh, uh, of course, uh, our pastor is Pastor Ian Morris, and uh, the topic today is the value of man, part two, and uh, in studio also is Elder Sherwin Paul. All right, so you've heard Pastor Ian Morris the second time around, and the invitation is yours now to give him a call. Numbers to call 222-8255, The Value of Man, Part 2. This is Food for Thought. Hmm. Back to you, Pastor Ian. Yes. While we await the calls. Okay. And so, um, you know, I remember I, I, I was telling you a, a story um, about myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that the, the, the African people, perhaps more than any other people, have had their identity assaulted in a way that I think... I think um, very few have. All right, hold a second. We'll come yes. at you. We have a caller coming in. Line two caller, welcome into uh, Power One Two Point One FM. Where are you, morning? Good morning to you, Mr. Chancellor. How everybody going? How everybody going? Oh, it's smiling. <laughs> uh, I just listening to the guy. As uh, Pastor Who Ian Morris. Pastor Ian Morris. Ian Morris. Yes, that's correct. Yes, sir. You know, what you speak about a while back? Yes. I have been speaking about maybe 20 something years back. <laughs> you went for under the heading identity crisis. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you were talking about it? Yes. People really don't know what the true identity after sin. So we try to make up because you're missing something. Yes. That what it is about. How could you get it across to people in this materialistic, secular, westernized society? Mm -hmm. Is that serious issue, brother? Is that serious issue? Yes, yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Let's Thank go you. to line two and take this call. Uh, let's see now. Line. Okay. All right. Line two, line three. Caller, welcome into uh, the program with Pastor Ian Morris. Good morning, Pastor Ian Morris. Uh, yes. This is Good um, Elder Paul. Yes. yes. Right. Um, Pastor, I want to ask you a question because um, nationality always plays, seem to be playing a, a, a big part in value. Yes. So being a Trinidadian and not being a Trinidadian, mm -hmm. how does that add or take away from my value? <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Cola. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't add or take away the value, mm -hmm. but it gives us an opportunity. Yes. To minister mm -hmm. to people, Amen. and and with a land that is as blessed as Trinidad and Tobago, why not use the opportunity to minister? Yes. In, 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 instead of because because if your if your land determines your value, when your land gets poor, <laughs> what, oh, when recession comes, what is that? <laughs> you know, you know it, it, a value. And I thank God that in the Bible, a value transcends the duty you're on. God right. gives the value. Yes. yes. And well, um, 
I, I, I'm, say, I'm saying to us, you know, I was saying, you know, um, in terms of in terms of myself, and, and I had to go through, I had to go through a journey. Great. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and because you know, the the society spitting at you, mm -hmm. spitting things at you, mm -hmm. that that because it is coming all the time, and there are few other voices, you believe it. I remember one day in in um, in, in Arima, uh, my uncle came. And he said, he's, he's, he, we, he had an MD magazine. That's the first time I saw Ebony magazine, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started to talk to me and so on. And then, then he, would say, he would say to me, you know you're very important. Special. And, yeah, and, I, and I didn't feel that way at all. All right, hold it's a second, it's... Pastor Maurice. Come at you. Let's take this caller. Caller, welcome and thank you for holding. Pastor Maurice, I'm back his here again. Yes, okay. <laughs> Master Morrissey, I have met people. Yes. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. Who don't yeah. like the server. That is true. I wonder why. <laughs> that is true. Amazing. They don't like know. the server. I ask them what is the problem. And the problem is I have a serious self esteem problem. Yeah. Yes. Because people have to identify. You have to identify who you say yourself. Yes. I can walk you on naked. <laughs> I have a powerful self-esteem brother and nobody can analyze me. I know who I am. Yes. And that we're society projecting that other young people today. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So here we on. Is that a slogan? They want to be like Mike. The other? Yes. yes. They want to be like this one and that one. Why not be yourself? So That's true. It. So true. I won. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Jones. Thank you so very much. So, uh, you know, just like you said, um, uh, you, you have to love yourself. Who yeah. you are, just as I am. Mm -hmm. That's why people said, just as I am. Be because God made you, God made you special. Yes. And he, and he gave you image and like this. a value. Yeah. Ima image and likeness. That's right. And, 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 and I, he started, uh, the, you know, my, my uncle um, started to talk about, um, um, you know, you know, you know, you know we, we, we could do anything that... We could do great things, hmm. right? And I, I started this this journey, so I said, "Wow, he say he's saying something." <laughs> yeah. So I, I started to, to go back to the Bible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as a young as young young man, I started to reading things about the Bible and reading, seeing the Bible through different lens. Amen. Uh, in, in in reality. And, and, and I, re I realized that when it came to value, not even I could comprehend my value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I must just embrace my value because I have ridiculous value. <laughs> Uncle, you? Tell me about it. You have ridiculous and value. value. And you know, there are some people who may be listening to you at this time. You believe in in the the straightening of the hair and doing this and that and yeah. listening to you. Now we sent telling him, "Well, I'm the he." Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, what happened to you? He just come in all just yeah, yeah. trying to change me. <laughs> to <Yeah>? change me. <laughs> uh, but we were we would we would talk about that and but, and even yeah. even the kinkiness of our hair is beautiful. Right, so yeah. we will be wrapping up uh, right now. So over to you, Elder Paul, as we as we wind down. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much, Pastor Morris. You know, truly a, a blessed and spiritual journey. You know, just just looking at at the enemy, and the not not just any enemy, but an enemy with an issue where he yes. uses anything, hmm. anything to deceive us, and we need to be mindful of truth. Oh yes, of truth. Man will be will be a more adequate replacement for 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 God for the devil that was cast out. And again, we need to to be so conscious of the of the things that he may use lies, redefine truth, resh and even redish, reshape mm -hmm. identity. My brothers and sisters, as we go today i must let you know we are a listener supported ministry and if you require a bible study questions or even prayer 
or you would just like to support us by gifts or contribution or to be a monthly donor, feel free to WhatsApp us at 266-2761, 266-2761, or email us at the real Bible Base Prophecy at gmail.com. We will continue next week as we look into part three of the value of man. And remember, walk with your Bible. Oh, yes. Because this journey is the Bible and you. Amen. Amen.